the square. Square is a plane figure with four sides and four right angles. If we are after the area of a square, then the area is just the square of the length of the side. Denoting the side with A, then the area is equal to A squared. The rectangle. A rectangle is a shape with four sides and four right angles. Actually, a square is a special type of rectangle because it possesses all the properties of a rectangle. Notice that in a rectangle, the opposite sides are of the same length. Now, if we are after the area of a rectangle, then the area can be computed to be equal to the base times the altitude. If we denote the base with B and the altitude with A, then the area is base times the altitude, which is BA. Sometimes we say that the area of a rectangle is width times length. The right triangle. A right triangle is a three-sided plane figure such that one of the three angles is a right angle, meaning it measures 90 degrees. If we are after the area of a right triangle, then we can use this formula. The area is equal to one-half base times height. If we denote with B the base, A the height, then the area is equal to one-half B times A. We also have the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is useful in solving any of the sides of a right triangle. It says that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two legs. Now, let's take a look at an oblique triangle. An oblique triangle is a triangle that has no right angle. We can compute for the area of an oblique triangle by this formula, one half base times the altitude. If we denote the base with B and the altitude with H, then the area can be computed as one half BH. Now, we can also make use of the Heron's formula to compute for the area given the lengths of the three sides. The Heron's formula, also known as Hero's formula is attributed to Hero of Alexandria, otherwise known as Heron of Alexandria. Heron was a Greek mathematician and engineer who was active in his city of Alexandria in Roman Egypt. He is often considered the greatest experimenter of antiquity, and his work is, a, is representative of the Hellenistic scientific tradition. Now, using this Hero's formula to compute for the height, I mean for the area, area is equal to the square root of S times the quantity S minus A times S minus B, then the other quantity S minus C. Once again, A, B, and C are the sides of the given triangle. Here, S is equal to the sum of the three sides all over two. Now, let's take the case of a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. The opposite or facing sides of a parallelogram are of equal length. These two have the same length, while these other two are assumed to have the same length also. Of course, the opposite angles are of equal measure also. These two angles are equal. These two are of the same measure. Now, the area of a parallelogram can be computed using this formula. Area is equal to base times height. Again, if we denote with B the base and height H, then area is equal to BH. Let's examine this, the, 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 the cyclic quadrilateral. A cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral for which a circle can be circumscribed so that the circle touches each of these four vertices 
a quadrilateral that can be both inscribed and circumscribed on some pair of circles is known as a bicentric quadrilateral. Bragamupta introduced a formula to compute for the area of this quadrilateral. This is actually similar to that of the Heron's formula. A is equal to the square root of this products, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, and S minus D, where A, B, C, and D are the sides of the quadrilateral. And S can be computed as the sum of these sides divided by 2. Now, let's take a look at a trapezoid. A trapezoid, also known as trapezium, is a plane figure having four straight sides with one pair of parallel lines. The parallel lines are known as the bases, A, B, with these notations, and its non-parallel sides are called the legs. The perpendicular distance between the parallel sides is called the altitude, denoted here as H. If we are after the area of the trapezoid, then it can be computed as one half times A plus B times H. Now, the case of a regular polygon. A regular polygon is a polygon that is equiangular and equilateral. If you say equi equiangular, that means all the angles are of the same measure, meaning this angle must be equal to this, to that, to this one, to that, and to this one. Equilateral means all the sides are of the same length. So these sides here are assumed to be of equal length. Okay. Now the area is equal to one half times the apothem, then the perimeter. Of course, we know what a perimeter is. Now what is this apothem? The apothem sometimes abbreviated as APO of a regular polygon is a line segment from the center of this figure to the midpoint of its sides. Equivalently, it is the line drawn from the center that is perpendicular to the one of its sides. The word apothem can also refer to the length of that line segment, here denoted with A. Regular polygons are the only polygons that have apothems. Because of this, all the apothems in a polygon will be congruent. Now, if we are after the apothem, I mean the area of a regular polygon, then we can use this formula. The area is equal to one half times the apothem times the perimeter, or in symbols, A is equal to one half, A being the apothem, P, e, the perimeter of the polygon. A circle. A circle is a round shaped figure that has no corners nor edges. It is a closed plane curve such that every point on it is equidistant from a fixed point, meaning from this center being the fixed point, this length to this on this circle will just be the same as this length here. This length is actually called the radius. Now, the circumference of the circle can be computed using this formula. C is equal to 2 pi r, where r is the radius. But knowing that the diameter is twice the radius, meaning this hole is the diameter, okay? then the circumference can be computed using this formula, of course. C is equal to pi times the diameter. With respect to the area, the area can be computed as equal to pi r squared, or using the diameter, area is pi over 4 times d squared. Now, the sector of a circle. A sector of a circle, also called circular sector, is a portion of a circle enclosed by two radii 
and an arc. So this is the arc, whose length is denoted with C, and this is the radius R. Now, if we are after the area of the sector of a circle, then we can have it computed using this formula, one half R times C. Once again, R is the radius, C is the length of the arc. Or in terms of the radians, in terms of the, the angle, I should say, when the angle theta is measured in radians, then we can compute for the area as equal to one half R squared theta. On the other hand, if the angle is measured in degrees, then A is equal to theta over 360 times pi R squared. Now, the segment of a circle. A segment of a circle is the region that is bounded by an arc and a chord of the circle. So this is the segment of a circle. Now the area of the segment is equal to the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle, meaning this whole area minus this area of the triangle will give us the area of this sector. Hence, the area can be computed using this formula, using the areas of the sector and the triangle. It is equal to one half RC, once again, R is the radius, C is the length of the arc, minus one half base times height. Base is the length of the chord, and A is the height of the triangle. Lastly, let's take the case of an ellipse. An ellipse is a plane curve surrounding two focal points. Such that for all points on the curve, the sum of the two distances to the focal points is constant. As such, it generalizes a circle, which is the special type of ellipse, in which the two focal points are the same. Here, A is the distance from the center to the ellipse on the major axis. If you say major axis, this is the line that runs through the center of the ellipse the, lo the long way. B, on the other hand, is the distance from the center to the ellipse on the minor axis. If you say minor axis, this is the line or axis perpendicular to the major axis and runs through the center the short way. Note that A is always greater than B. A is always greater than B. A at the major axis, take note, and B at the, ma the minor axis. Now, to compute for the area of an ellipse, this is just equal to pi AB. Again, the area is pi AB, where A is the distance from the center to the ellipse on the major axis, while B is the distance from the center to the ellipse on the minor axis. There you go. I hope you, you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching.